Abilities are one of the best parts of the Splatoon series. Allowing players to express themselves and having different playstyles for the same weapons allows for more in-depth gameplay. Hey, I'm Evie, a longtime Splatoon player, and here's the second episode in a series I'm doing covering the history of certain abilities throughout the Splatoon series. Last time, we looked at Thermalink, but this time we're moving on to an even more obscure ability, Opening Gambit. But before we go into its history, let's talk about its mechanics and what it does. Opening Gambit is a headgear exclusive ability that increases movement stats at the start of a game. This helps you approach the middle of the map faster than the other team. To gain a positional advantage at the beginning of a match, the exact stats of the ability have changed over time. So let's start with its first appearance in Splatoon. In Splatoon, Opening Gambit was not seen as a useful ability at all. It only gave you... Uh... The wiki doesn't have any info on what it used to give you. So, after doing some research searching on old Squidboard's post, I found Opening Gambit used to give you 10 AP of swim speed up and run speed up for the first 30 seconds of a match, before going away forever. One sub equals 3 AP, and one main equals 10 AP, so 5 subs in total. Wow, that isn't a lot, especially since it's thrown away for the rest of the match afterwards. Not a great start off for this ability. But in version 2.6.0 on March 8th, 2016, Opening Gambit got its first change, increasing the amount of run speed and swim speed received from only a few subs to 30 AP, or 3 mains. This is an actual substantial buff, and the first time anyone actually considered the ability, before immediately disregarding it again. While the amount of abilities it gave you was significant, it was really hard justifying throwing all of it away after 30 seconds. Splatoon matches, especially the first game, can change very quickly on who has the lead or not. But this is how it was left in Splatoon 1, but thankfully, it returned in Splatoon 2. Opening Gambit still didn't have a good start in Splatoon 2, but early on, it was looking a bit up. In version 1.4.0 on October 11th, 2017, Opening Gambit got another buff, letting it have 3 mains of ink resistance up. This helped the player's mobility even more, not being slowed down by enemy ink to help its position in the middle of the map. But the main issue of throwing away an entire main slot was still not appealing, and it still wasn't used. But Opening Gambit got a massive buff in version 3.0.0 on April 25th, 2018. If the user got a kill or assist while the ability was still active, the duration would extend by 7.5 seconds. This was big, because now you'd get rewarded for playing really aggressively at the start of a match and try to snowball your advantage. This really helped NZAP85, because it already wanted mobility, and any teammate with your ink armor getting a kill would extend your own movement speed. Later, this also helped Kensa Undercover Brella. But the hype immediately died down, because the act of throwing away a main slot for the whole game if you couldn't be aggressive at the start was still a massive problem. And with Splatoon 2 showing enemy abilities on the map screen, you could see what they're up to and try to stall out the timer. You can really only try to cheese Rainmaker to get an extremely early lead, but that still isn't a foolproof plan. 7.5 seconds was nice, but still not enough, and we're stuck in this loop of people not wanting to use the ability that affects the least important part of the match. That's how it was left in Splatoon 2, but it again returned in Splatoon 3. It was the same old song and dance for opening Gambit in Splatoon 3. Nobody wanted to use it, but one patch changed everything. In version 3.1.0, on March 31st, 2023, opening Gambit had its biggest buff yet. Not only now it has 3 mains of intensify action, but the duration extension for getting a kill or assist has increased from 7.5 to 15 seconds. The addition of intensify action was a great choice. It enhances Splatoon 3's new movement techniques and can help you get around the map faster, but also increasing the duration of the abilities affected after a kill or assist leave the ability to have a lot more room for error. So, people can finally use this ability without it being a waste. So even after 7 years of only positive changes, opening Gambit still sees no serious use. Like, at all. And I think it comes down to two main reasons. Opportunity cost, and risk. Opening Gambit is only available on headgear, so you need to make a choice to use it, or comeback, tenacity, or last ditch effort. And I think this directly competes with comeback. Comeback gives you a main of run speed, swim speed, ink saver main, ink saver sub, ink recovery up, and special charge up for 20 seconds after respawning. While each effect isn't as strong as opening gambit, it gives a lot more of them consistently, since aggressive weapons like the mobility enhancements and go in and die a lot, so getting stat buffs after each death 
helps those weapons. The second main reason is risk. While getting a kill in the first 30 seconds might not be too hard, if you die, the ability is basically over. Since it takes some time to respawn and get back into position, you need to play aggressive enough to secure a kill or two, but not too reckless and die and waste your ability. The enemy can also play around you having opening gambit, standing in defensive positions waiting out the timer, while you can't do anything about it. Whether you got the value out of it or not, the rest of the game, you don't have a main gear slot. While getting an early lead can help carry momentum throughout the rest of the game, it's usually the least impactful part of an entire match, since people are just rolling out and trying to set up. This is even worse in Splatoon 3, as Tacticooler is able to do everything opening Gambit can do, and more, not only increasing speed for you, but your entire team, as well as giving them faster respawns, super jumps, and no loss to their special upon death. So is opening Gambit actually useful anywhere? Well, I have one gimmicky suggestion. It has the most use in Rainmaker, where some games can end in less than a minute. Getting to the middle quickly to pop the Rainmaker shield and set up positions can be very powerful here, as well as the opening Gambit user can carry the Rainmaker to help mitigate the penalties it provides. But that's really the only place it could be used, trying to overwhelm the enemy with speed while also moving the objective. It doesn't really work in Turf War Splat Zones, where the objective remains stationary. Tower Control is a set path in speed, so there's only a limit on how fast you can score points, and Clam Blitz has a lot of time collecting clams and making an opening for a push. Though, is opening Gambit good on any weapons? Not really. As I mentioned earlier in Splatoon 2, some weapons with ink armor might like it, but nothing else really. In Splatoon 3, blasters like the large amount of intensify action, specifically range blaster, being able to quickly overwhelm the opponent if they have map control. When it got buffed in Splatoon 3, people tried using it with the Splattershot Nova, as the weapon is really good at getting assists with point sensors and Killer Whale 5.1. Though this fell off quickly, as Nova needs to rely on its team to get kills early and would rather use last ditch effort to reduce its downtime. Weapons like Splatlings or Spooshomatic like the massive amount of movement, but it's too short lived, so they would rather invest in other abilities. Opening Gambit is now in its best place it's ever been in the Splatoon series, but still never gets used. What would I do to change it? Well, simple. I would pause the timer on death and make it start again once you're in the spawner drone because the 8 to 10 seconds of respawning absolutely punishes you way too hard for messing up, with no way to recover it. I'd also add something to signify the ability is over. They can make it like a sound, or the ability on your map screen can flash when it's active, like Splatoon 1. I feel like this change wouldn't make it amazing or anything, but give it a few more uses on hyper-aggressive Rainmaker teams, as well as not punishing you as hard for dying. I have some extra things I want to go over about opening game, but before we wrap up, it is a new icon in each game. In Splatoon 1, it's a timer with part of it filled in to signify the start of a match, parallel to last ditch effort at the time. In Splatoon 2, it's an arrow next to your spawn point, while in Splatoon 3 it's changed to your spawn drone. Nice details across each game. And even in the beta of Splatoon 1, it looks like a more simplified form, with an hourglass instead of a hand clock. In Splatoon 3, if you want to put opening gambit on a piece of gear, it takes 15 chunks of run speed, swim speed, and ink resistance up each. I find underutilized abilities fascinating. It's a mix of how the developers balance the strengths and weaknesses, or what's intriguing about what the ability offers. I plan to continue this series, and decided to make a playlist where you could view all of them in one place. The Thermal Ink one will be there if you missed it. And I want to thank all of you for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe, so I know you want more content like this in the future. See you all next time. Bye.